Hello again everyone, this is Mr. V. Hill, and today we're going to be talking about how to factor by grouping. And in just a second you're going to see why we name it that. But let's just start off with a really simple example. I think we've already done this example before, but we want to factor this into the product of two linear binomials. x squared plus 5x plus 6. And when we saw this before, this is one of those easy cases where all you really got to do is look for two numbers that when you multiply them together you get 6, but when you add them together you get 5. And of course, the numbers that do that are 2 and 3. 2 times 3 equals 6, and 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. And so now we know that these are the numbers that we want in our linear factors. So this is going to be equal to x plus 2 times x plus 3. And we can check that just by multiplying this out and we'll see if we get it right back to there. I kind of lied to you in the last video about this though. Because really we don't want just two numbers that multiply together to give you 6 but add together to give you 5. We really want two numbers that when you multiply them together you'll get 1 times 6. So this, what we're learning now is going to work when this coefficient of x squared is not 1. Okay. But let's see how this is going to work just going through this example and we're going to factor this by grouping it's called. So what we're going to do is we're going to take x squared plus 5x plus 6 and now what we're actually going to do and really what we're, we're doing up here, the reason why this whole thing works is we're going to take these two numbers and we're going to break up this linear term, the 5x, using these two numbers, 2 and 3. So we're going to rewrite this polynomial as x squared plus 2x plus 3x plus 6. We just split this 5x up into 2x plus 3x. No big deal there. And now what we're going to observe here, we're going to group these first two terms together and we're going to group these last two terms together. And we're going to see what the GCF is in each of those groups. So for these two terms, we see that the GCF is of course equal to x. And these two terms, the GCF is equal to 3. And we can, if we want to, just to keep everything straight, we'll rewrite each of the terms so we can see the GCF in each of them. So we're going to say that here the x squared is actually x times x. The 2x, well, that's just 2 times x, so we can clearly see the GCF there. Plus 3x is, of course, just 3x. We can see this factor of 3 in there. Plus 6 is now 3 times 2. So now we can see the GCF in that term as well. And then what we do, and we're grouping these two terms together, so we're going to put parentheses around them. And we're going to group these two terms together, putting parentheses around them. And then we just notice that we have the GCF of x in each of these terms, which we're going to undistribute. And it doesn't really matter which side of the parentheses you bring it out to because of commutativity, but we do the same thing over here. This common factor of 3 gets factored out or undistributed. So what we end up with is we have these red parentheses that I drew. We pulled the common factor of x out to this side. And then what's left inside, we've got an x here, the plus sign, and 2. Bring down our plus sign. And again, we have these parentheses. We've pulled the 3 out to the back side. And what's left inside the parentheses, we have an x, we've got plus, and then we have 2. Fantastic. Now, we have two terms here, and they have a common factor of x plus 2 in both of them. So we put another set of parentheses in around the whole thing. 
and we notice this common factor of x plus two here, and this common factor of x plus two right here, we'll undistribute that common factor out to this side. It doesn't really matter which side you go to, but that's how I'm always used to it. So, finally what we have here, we have these blue parentheses out here. We've pulled out this factor of x plus two, which was in the red parentheses. And of course, inside those red parentheses, we had x plus two. And then what's left over inside the blue parentheses, we have this x plus, and then three. So again, it's x plus two times x plus three. So this whole process here is why this quick and easy little procedure works. Okay. And that's what's called factor by grouping. And it's just the idea that we split this up so we have four terms, the like terms here in the middle, but then we group the first two terms together and we group the last two terms together. Okay. Let's do one more example here before I show you the whole procedure here. 2x squared plus 13x plus 15. So now here, the a, the coefficient of x squared, is not one. But so what we do is we're gonna look at the product of two times 15, the coefficient of the quadratic term and the constant term. So of course, two times 15 is equal to 30, and that's the number that we're trying to work with. So we need, now we need two other numbers. Well, it might be these two numbers, but usually not. It doesn't really matter. But so this number 30, we need to split it up so it, we have two numbers that multiply together to give us 30, but when we add them together, we get 13. And hopefully we can spot that right away, that three times 10 gives us 30, but three plus 10 is equal to 13. That's what we need. So these are the two numbers that we want. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to split up this 13x into 3x plus 10x. So we have 2x squared plus 3x plus 10x plus 15. And what we're going to notice here, the greatest common factor of these first two terms is of course just x. And the GCF of these last two terms is five. So we're gonna group these two terms together and factor out the x or undistribute it. And in these last two terms, we're gonna group them together and undistribute the common factor of five. So really quick, we'll just rewrite this so we can see those common factors in here. So 2x squared is 2x times x. 3x is, of course, 3 times x. Plus 10x is actually 5 times 2x. And the 15 is actually 5 times 3. So now we can see those common factors in each pair. So we're going to group these two together by putting parentheses around them and then undistribute the common factor of x. And over here, group those two terms together and undistribute the common factor of 5. So here we've got these parentheses. We've pulled this factor of x out to the back side. And what's left inside, I've got 2x plus 3. Bring down this addition. And I've got these parentheses over here. I pull the common factor of 5 out to this back side. And what's left inside, I've got 2x 
plus 3. Now we see in these two terms that result, I've got a common factor of 2x plus 3. So all I do is I put parentheses around this whole thing. Now I look at the common factor here of 2x plus 3 in both terms, and I'm going to undistribute that. So what we end up with, I pulled the common factor of 2x plus 3 out to the front, and then what's left in the blue parentheses, I have x plus 5. And so that is the factorization of 2x squared plus 13x plus 15. And if you want to check this, of course, just take these two and multiply them back out. What you're going to see is it's the exact reverse procedure. So that's how we factor by grouping. And so the general procedure looks like this. We've got a quadratic trinomial that looks like this, a times x squared plus bx plus c. First, we multiply a and c together. Then we find factors of the product AC so that will add up to B. So we need two numbers that will multiply together to give us this, but will add together to give us this coefficient of the linear term. Split up the BX into two terms using those numbers that we got from up here, and then we just group the first two terms together, the last two terms together, and then factor out the GCF. Okay. Let's do one more example just to make sure we've all got this. Six x squared minus seven x minus five. Okay. Now, always I hate subtractions. They always end up causing me to lose a negative sign in here. So I'm gonna switch this up to plus negative seven x and plus negative five. So first thing, we're going to multiply a times c. So 6 times negative 5, if you look at 6, is of course negative 30. So now I need two numbers that when I multiply them together, I get negative 30. But when I add them together, I get negative 7. Obviously, 6 and negative 5 don't do that. So if you spend some time thinking and racking your brain about this, you'll notice really quick that negative 10 and 3 are what works. So negative 10 times 3 is negative 30, and negative 10 plus 3 is equal to negative 7. Some good number sense will help you out with this. It's going to take a little bit of trial and error as you start with these but you'll get it down pretty quick after you do, oh, five, six hundred problems. So what we're going to do is we're going to split up this negative 7x as negative 10x plus 3x. So we've got 6x squared plus negative 10x plus 3x plus negative 5. Now here, our GCF is not going to be just x. We have actually have another factor of 2 in both of these terms. So here our GCF is going to actually be equal to 2x. And over here, well, our GCF is actually just 1. And that's OK, perfectly fine. And so. Now we just factor out the GCF in each of these groups. So we rewrite this so we can see the GCF. So 6x squared is actually 2x times 3x plus negative 10x is 2x times negative 5 
plus 3x plus negative 5. They both have a factor of 1 in them. That, that's fine. So really what we're going to do is group these guys together and factor out that GCF of 2x. I'm going to pull it out to this back side. And here, we're going to factor out the common factor of 1. Or we could just put a factor of 1 out there. Not a big deal. So what we end up with in these first two terms, the GCF of 2x came out to the back side. And what's left in there, 3x plus negative 5. Plus, now we've got in these red parentheses, 3x plus negative 5. And we pulled a common factor of 1 out to the back side. Or we just throw in that factor of 1 because it doesn't change anything. And wonderful, we now have a common factor of 3x plus negative 5 in both of the terms that result. So I'll put some parentheses around this whole thing. And identify this common factor of 3x plus negative 5. And we undistribute that back to the front. Or the back if you really feel like it, it doesn't matter. So what we end up with is that GCF of 3x plus negative 5 out here. Then we have our blue parentheses. And what's left inside them is a 2x plus that common factor of 1 right there. So this is the factorization of 6x squared plus negative 7x plus negative 5. And of course, check, just multiply these things out, and you'll see that you're going to go right back through this exact same procedure going backwards. And that's factoring by grouping. And so I'm going to leave you guys with a few practice problems here. So go ahead and factor these ones by grouping. Now these are kind of, let me darken these a little bit, make sure you can actually see them. There you go. A little bit better. Three problems. Have fun with them.